This is what is left of one of Don Beach's lesser known tiki cocktails, a chichi. It was the subject of last week's video and it's missing one of its key ingredients that made it worth trying in the first place. So on today's episode of Mike's Heart Reviews, I'm going to revisit the chichi, reimagine it as a better tiki cocktail and put the macadamia nut back in the chichi, the mac and she on today's episode of Mike's Heart Reviews. Fucking love tiki cocktails. Hey there, Heather Hother, and hello, my name is Michael. I am a home bartender and mixologist from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and today I'm taking a look at a classic tiki cocktail um, that uh, we looked at last week, the Chi Chi, and bringing it back to its roots by reintroducing one of its titular, titular ingredients that was removed after scarcity became a problem. So to give you the run uh, on what this drink is, this is a chi-chi, uh, chi-chi with an added float of Peychaud's bitters, which is my preferred way <laughs> to drink them. This is a combination of pineapple juice, cream of coconut, and vodka that once upon a time also included a macadamia nut liqueur, which as a variation of a pina colada is what drove this drink to be different from that cocktail. The problem is, the scarcity of that ingredient back in the 50s, 60s when this cocktail was imagined made it difficult to produce that way, so it was inevitably removed. And I want to fix that because this is kind of fucking boring and bordering on not being a tiki cocktail in the first place. I'm gonna finish it because I spent money and all this shit in here, but I'm gonna make one that is better than this. Now, macadamia nut is kind of a hard flavor to work with, I will say. I see why it would have been removed because if the liqueur that they were using, Don Beach was using, back when this cocktail was invented is no longer available, finding an alternative that is equally as workable is hard, but I have managed to do it. And I'm, we're, we're gonna take this from, from square one and just start all over because I don't think this cocktail should be a pina colada variation. Pina coladas have this problem of if you're not using very fresh, handmade ingredients that are like, you know, ripe, fresh off the pineapple, fresh, fresh out of the coconut. It's, it's not, it's not good. This is all fresh homemade ingredients aside from the vodka. And I'm using a high quality vodka at that. And that's why it works, but it's not a sustainable platform for something, for something like a flavor like macadamia to be, to be placed. I, I can't find the words right now. <laughs> My point is that I'm going to change this from being a variation on a pina colada to a variation on a cocktail that is called a cow. Or a rum cow, if you're thinking about it from different perspectives. We're not using rum, so I'm not gonna call it that. Cows are an actually uh, sort of forgotten tiki cocktail that feature milk, cream, flavoring liqueurs, rum, and bitters, uh, and are meant to be sort of long, milkshakey, kind of frothy, sweeter, but still complex drinks. There's a really great article from Punch Magazine that I'll link in the description down below that I used when I discovered these cocktails. I wanna do a video specifically on the history of them and look at like the most famous version of this, or even there's like a modern one in that, in that article, I might do that. But rather than do that now, I wanna focus on my personal variation of a Chi Chi that I call a Mac and Chi that uses that platform to reintroduce the macadamia nut in a prominent and important way. Because the thing that distinguishes a Chi Chi from a pina colada is not just that the spirit changes from rum to vodka, it's the introduction of this flavor of macadamia nut. But it doesn't work in that context, so we need to change all of it. And, and as an explanation too, it doesn't work in this context because the acidity from pineapple juice, even fresh pineapple juice, gives macadamia in forms other than that liqueur Don Beach was using, a kind of weird acrid bile-like fakeness that it tastes like vomit and it's not good. Um, so I've reworked it to favor the flavor of the macadamia nut in a more appropriate way. Since we're not using the macadamia nut liqueur, we have to find a different way to introduce macadamia into this cocktail, and I'm going to do that in the form of an orjo. In this bottle is a macadamia nut orjo made with a raw turbinado sugar. I, I did that to give it some additional complexity and sort of balance out the flavor of the macadamia because it is very, very potent. This is a real full fat macadamia nut orjo, something you're gonna have to make yourself if you wanna try this at home. I'll leave the, uh, the recipe in the description down below. This is how we're going to bring the macadamia nut back into the cocktail that is the mac and cheese. Because the liqueur is not available to us, we're operating on that, on that assumption, this is the best way to do it. And I would argue the freshest way to do it because this is just straight up essence of macadamia nut and it's really, really potent. 
Macadamia nut has this really robust nuttiness. Like this, like, the, the, like when you think about what the word nutty means as a flavor, that is what macadamia nut is cranked to 10. Fuck it, cranked to 11 even. And it's, it's really hard to balance and especially with acidity, it just doesn't quite work. So I wanna give this a platform upon which it can stand. So in order to give that or show its place to stand, a leg to stand on, we're gonna make what I call a mac and cheese right now. Grab a cocktail shaker and we're gonna start with three quarters of an ounce of our macadamia nut or joe. No substitute, you gotta make it. Recipes in the description below. Gonna come behind that with two full ounces of a high proof vodka, looking for a bare minimum 50% uh, alcohol by volume. I'm keeping the vodka here as the base the same as a traditional Chi Chi because I feel like that is um, distinguishing for a tiki cocktail. Almost all of them are made with rum, so making one with vodka is not only going to allow us to kind of let the macadamia nut be uninfluenced by the character of a rum, uh, but also stay true to the original that we're basing this off of. Gonna come behind that with some coconut milk. Uh, the fresher and you know less adulterated, the better. Uh, we're gonna do three full ounces. And finally, we're gonna need a combo of bitters. Um, so I'm going to do uh, two to three dashes of Angostura cocoa bitters, and one very firm dash of Angostura bitters. I'm gonna move this off to the side now that I'm more or less done with it. We're gonna grab some ice and give this a shake. As with any uh, shaken cocktail, we're gonna stick to our one cube hole and one cube cracked ethos. Explosive today, god damn. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> We're gonna cap this up, tap that down, and then shake for 10 to 12 seconds to chill, dilute, and kind of try to froth up that coconut milk as best as possible. Now, when I first conceptualized this cocktail, I was putting it in a highball glass with a lot of ice, which is perfectly fine, but something ceramic and like a tiki mug would be even better because this cocktail doesn't have a great color to it. It's sort of like an off orange, kind of very pale gray, peachy color. Um, and that's fine, it doesn't look bad per se, but I think putting it in something ceramic is a better idea. So I'm gonna grab this mug here. Not, not tiki, but you know, it'll work. <laughs> we'll fill that with some smaller ice. And there's no pulp in here, but I'm gonna double strain this into our glass to catch any ice chips. And then finally for our garnish, Rather than lean into pineapple, which doesn't really make any sense, I'm going to grab some fresh mint here. Gonna form ourselves a nice little bouquet. Just give that a quick squeeze to express the oils. Put that down in here next to our ice. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a mac and cheese. I fucking love that name. <laughs> So, we've got our station cleaned up. Let's go ahead and do something we don't normally get the chance to do, and do a side-by-side -side comparison here. This is my more or less original, original Chi Chi. I've got that fluid of pastry with the bitters on top. That's, you know, a little bit distinct. But aside from that, that is a classic Chi Chi. And this here is our reimagined Chi Chi as the Mac and Chi. Very different approaches to the subject of a tiki cocktail. And one of them is definitely more in the sort of terms of how you construct a, a tiki cocktail and how you dress up a tiki cocktail. This is more visually presentational. This is more flavor, you know, contextually, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> and they're they're very different. They're this, they're both tiki, but they're very different cocktails. Despite that, I think that that is so much fun. I want to finish this, but these are not gonna taste good together. So I'm just gonna eat these cherries and put this to the side. We're gonna take a straw, put that down into our glass with our ice, and put that nice and close to the mint and give our mac and cheese its taste. Cheers. Man, man, that is so, so much more interesting. Oh my God. Academia nut, nice and bold. Very, very strong flavor. And when you sweeten it, you get a very pleasant form of that that isn't like chalky or I got him! <laughs> ah, I got that fucking gnat that's been flying around for two episodes. Fuck you, bitch. Sorry, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the macadamia nut is like a way more interesting flavoral component to this. And it stands out so much from what you would typically experience in any form of tiki cocktail, even from the almond or joe flavor present in a Mai Tai. It's just so robust and earthy 
but still friendly and warm, and it's welcoming to the sort of cocoa bitters, you know, like intense kind of dark bitterness, and that Angostura spice that it, it's just like taking those and pulling them in and, and making this one very great cohesive unit. This lengthening with coconut milk is like really, really pleasant. Um, and also friendly for those of us like myself who are lactose intolerant. Um, and and it, it just works so, so swimmingly. Yeah, all of those flavors just kind of bounce off of one another seamlessly. And the macadamia nut is the thing that you're tasting the most. You get this nice little creamy silkiness from from the coconut milk, but it's not so intense that it takes you know over anything. Um, it's a lot more balanced here, and unlike you know like a pina colada or a regular chi chi, it's it's not the sweetener. So you can have a little bit more of it and let it be a moderating flavor to the macadamia nut, which openly welcomes the kind of blank canvas that it brings to drum up its own flavor. It's great, and the fact that we're using vodka here is actually reasonable because you're not getting any interplay between the rum and the macadamia nut that might make it unpleasant or or unbalanced or disinteresting. It's, it's working really, really well. Now I will say, I have made this spec with rums. Um, and there, there are actually some that work really, really well. I, I'm not going to lie, I kind of hate saying this, but I have a bottle of Bacardi Spiced right now that I was using um, just to spike some tea um, for like quick and easy hot toddies. And I threw some of that in here, two ounces of that in here instead of vodka. Oh man, <laughs> it, was, it was surprisingly tasty. It was really, really good. The sort of cinnamony vanilla notes go great with the macadamia nut, especially because we're using a raw sugar that has some of those notes in it already. Um, and then it, it just bounces off the coconut great too. Everything plays together real well there. That's really great. Um, I have a bottle of Bacardi Ocho, which is a Puerto Rican rum, eight years aged. It's also pretty good here, a little intense. You do read a lot of it because there's a whole two ounces in here, so it, it is present. Um, and I think it does kind of pull away from the macadamia nut a little bit, but if you're more in favor of having some characterful spirit impact there, that's not a bad idea. The only kind of rum that I've tried that didn't work was Jamaican rum. There's a sort of combination between the funkiness of Jamaican rum and the macadamia nut here that is not, not, not my bag, not my go-to. I don't think it works very well. It gives it this kind of weird, weird combative flavor. There's like, there's like flavoral dissonance, excuse me, dissonance. Not a good time. But any other, you know, more gentle rum, I imagine will work just fine here. Plantation Three Star, Bacardi Superior, Bacardi Gold. Um, I mean, hell, actually, you know, honestly, even Plantation uh, OFTD, Old Fashioned Traditional Dark, they're really heavy proof rum that's like really heavily aged. They're overproof. That might not be bad here either, actually. I think that would, there's a case to be made that that would go really, really well in here too. What I'm saying is that there's a lot of places to play with this. And while this is already a tiki cocktail, the way that we've built it, you can make it even closer to a tiki cocktail you might already know by simply adding some rum instead of vodka. That is my cocktail, the Mac and Chi, a revitalization and a revival of the Chi Chi, or the Macadamia Nut Chi Chi in this case, that actually embraces the notion of the flavor of Macadamia Nut. And that is all that I have for you guys today, so we're gonna go ahead and can read from our crisp toasts to cap off this episode. We started the adventure section in the last episode, and as such, we shall continue uh, from the adventure section with today's toast. Oh, uh, I didn't read ahead. I didn't read ahead, so I didn't know that this one was gonna mention one of my favorite authors of all time. This is great. To Kurt Vonnegut, who said, unusual travel suggestions are dancing lessons from the gods. Cheers. I love Vonnegut's writing. Cat's Cradle is one of my favorite books. I don't know what the fuck that means, but hey, I'm here for it. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching uh, this episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch another episode. Um, this is a Tuesday upload. They don't always happen, but I do make an episode of the show every single Friday and then sometimes on Tuesdays. So if you want to know whenever that is happening, click the subscribe and bell down below and you'll be told. You can also follow me on my socials that are either appearing on the screen now or have been on the screen for some time. Uh, in either case, um, I use basically two of them, Instagram and TikTok. The most, I'm on TikTok more than I am Instagram these days, so follow me there if you want, but also just hang out with me here because YouTube is cooler than all of those places. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Please remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Fuck you, Nat.
Gotcha, bitch. Low key, it tastes like nutty chocolate milk. I know, I'm putting, I'm putting this at the very end of the episode, even after the outro music is ended, and there's probably no, like, recorded audio playing right now. Tastes like nutty chocolate milk. It's really, really good. Way better than this shit. Oh my god.